women suffer unnecessary pain. Women are not getting effective treatment. And sometimes women die. Why? Because we don't know enough about the human body. And we don't know, talk enough about our health. And we let cultural stigma and taboo silence us. And we're not aware enough to do anything about it. When you remember 2020, what comes to mind? It has to be COVID, right? One significant event that went largely unnoticed was the launch of the first ever digital 3D model of the full female anatomy. For years, medical educators had relied solely on the 3D model of the male anatomy, leaving women's health understudied and misunderstood. Women were effectively treated like little men, and the medical world considered us all to be a 70-kilogram white male. But now, for the first time, a surgeon could actually practice and prepare on the full 3D model of a cervix. It's a game changer, but only for the last three years. And let me share with you a few other things that we've only found out about women's health over the last decade. Some period pain is as painful as a heart attack. And yet, every month, we plow through it. And talking about heart attack, women experience heart attacks differently. Apart from chest pain and arm pain, the classic symptoms, women also experience nausea, cold sweats, exhaustion. Sounds like an average day in the life of a woman, right? <laughs> that is why so many women go undiagnosed for heart attacks. And did you know that it takes, on average, eight years to be diagnosed for endometriosis, a very painful condition where tissue similar to the lining of the uterus actually grows outside of it? We have normalized eight years of pain. When it comes to advances in medical research, on women's health, there is a massive gender gap. Let me ask you, what percentage of global health R&D do you think is allocated to health issues exclusive to women? Has to be 50%, right? Because we're half of the population? Actually, it's only 3%. Yeah, let's let that sink in for a moment. Only 3% of global health R&D is allocated to health issues that are exclusive to women. This massive gap between the services and support that women need and can get from the existing healthcare system, just because you're a woman, is unacceptable. I've spent the last 25 years in C-suite roles in finance and technology. And you know what that taught me? Data and technology create change. Through technology, we can democratize the well-being of women. This gender health gap, it's a significant problem, but it's also a massive and exciting opportunity. Enter Femtech. 
a category of products and services that use technology to improve women's health. Femtech is already making waves globally, but let me share with you some examples of companies, of Femtech companies in Asia. Homegrown, a company called Women X from Hong Kong. They've developed a menstrual pad that can test for reproductive system cancers and infections. For now, only available in a lab in Science Park, but hopefully coming to all of us soon. Or 2 Plus Fertility from Singapore that helps couples make babies. They've created a tool that you could use for fertility, but also maintains the intimacy during sex. You can order it online, use it at home, and the good news, it's only 10% of the cost of an IVF treatment. Or Unprood from the Philippines, which has created a platform of healthcare providers where women can go to ask their questions about sexual health and sexual wellness without being judged. These are some examples of femtech companies in Asia. And globally, there are many companies that are bringing solutions to you. Think about a wearable hot flush predictor, one I'm personally very excited about. <laughs> or a device which you can use at home to monitor your fetus in a high-risk high pregnancy from the benefit of your sofa or companies that are using AI to accelerate the screening for breast cancer. Now, let me ask you, why can you probably name five new restaurants and five new nail salons, but you probably can't name five new companies, femtech companies, that are bringing solutions to you? It's time to change that. Let me share with you the story of my friend Lucy. Lucy comes from a middle-class Catholic family from the Philippines. At the age of 22, she moved to Singapore, met a colleague at work, had sex for the first time, and due to the stigma and taboo in her culture, around contraception, she fell pregnant. Lucy had an abortion. Lucy spent eight years keeping this abortion a secret. Had she had, had access to a platform like Unprude, or friends to talk to, it would have saved her massive mental and physical pain. Not to mention, expensive therapy. Asia represents half of the female population, yet only 15% of all femtech companies come from Asia. The need is real and it's urgent. The femtech revolution in Asia has only just begun. And that is why I joined as co-CEO recently of the Femtech Association Asia. And it's going to take a while before we close the gender health gap. But I hope today's story brings you on your own journey. Some of you might be surprised about what you've heard. Some of you might be angry. And hopefully some of you are inspired to start your own femtech company. So let me leave you with a few simple actions. And let's call it sex. Just because that's another topic that's so difficult to talk about in Asia. Let's talk about sex, baby. <laughs> Speak up. Do not accept pain. Go to your doctor, get a second opinion, Talk to your family and loved ones. 
Own your own health. Number two, educate yourself and others. Attend events, participate in clinical trials. Women X is actually doing one in Hong Kong at the moment. Do research on what Femtech solutions can do for you. And most importantly, offer to give back your data so that we can understand and learn more about the health issues specific to women in Asia. And take action. Support women's health in the femtech industry. Become an angel investor. And maybe consider setting up your own femtech company. And think about what technology you can use to reach as many women as possible. As Michelle Obama said, communities, countries, and eventually the world are only as strong as the health of its women. Challenge the status quo. Your health should not be a 3% niche. It should be a priority. Thank you.